I'm the only black guy up here, so. How did Clarence Thomas go from a left-wing activist to the most conservative justice on the U.S. Supreme Court? Who is Clarence Thomas? Growing up in the segregated Jim Crow South, Thomas aimed to be his small Georgia town's first black Catholic priest. It was a short-lived aspiration that fell apart after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Thomas thought the church didn't do enough to combat racism, and so he left it. My grandfather asked me to leave his house following my abandonment of my vocation. I was 19 years old. Thomas was admitted to the College of the Holy Cross during a push for increased black student enrollment through affirmative action. Here, Thomas embraced a radical transformation. He adopted the Black Panther's attire, combat boots, a beret, and hung up a poster of Malcolm X, whose speeches he had memorized. He played an active role in the university's Black Student Union, leading protests and advocating for social justice issues. In 1970, he protested the trial of two Black Panther members in Boston, during which violent clashes between police and demonstrators broke out. It quickly devolved into a riot in Cambridge Square. And after rioting all night, I returned to um, Holy Cross at about four in the morning and asking myself a simple question, what did I just do? Thomas hung up his combat boots and beret for a suit and tie. He got accepted to Yale Law at the exact time the university adopted an affirmative action program. Thomas's shift to the right started at Yale when he met a specific classmate, John Bolton, who would eventually become Trump's national security advisor. They met after Bolton returned Thomas's lost wallet to him, which sparked a decade-long friendship. Around this time, Thomas took down his Malcolm X poster and replaced it with a photo of a Rolls Royce. Once out of school, Thomas met John Danforth, the then Republican Missouri Attorney General who was looking to hire a more diverse staff. Thomas got the gig. In 1980, after spending all of his time with a conservative senator, Thomas switched his party affiliation to Republican and voted for Reagan. The rightward shift was complete. Thomas caught the eye of the Reagan administration, who hired him onto the transition team. He rose through the ranks, eventually being tapped to run the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And when George H.W. Bush took the reins, he nominated Thomas to replace the departing Thurgood Marshall on the Supreme Court. Good morning, Judge. Welcome, uh, welcome to the blinding lights. The hearings, led by then-Chairman Joe Biden, concluded after 10 days, but a major development emerged during them. Anita Hill's allegations of sexual harassment by Thomas during her time at the EEOC and Department of Education. NPR published an FBI investigation into the allegations on October 6, 1991, prompting a postponement of the final vote. When hearings reopened, Biden limited the investigation scope by allowing only a brief time frame, giving Thomas the first and last speaking slot and denying three other women the chance to testify about harassment they faced from Thomas. This set the stage for an all-white, all-male committee led by Biden to largely dismiss Hill's allegations. Are you a scorned woman? Do you have a militant attitude relative to the area of civil rights? Do you have a martyr complex? The issue of fantasy has arisen. Are you interested in writing a book? Hill provided a thorough account of her allegations, describing Thomas's persistent advances despite her rejections. She highlighted numerous instances where he summoned her to his office and steered their conversations towards sexual subjects. He spoke about acts that he had seen in pornographic films and films showing group sex or rape scenes. He talked about pornographic materials depicting individuals with large penises or large breasts involved in various sex acts. On several occasions, Thomas told me graphically of his own sexual prowess. Thomas denied every allegation and was confirmed for a lifetime appointment by a 52 to 48 vote in the Democrat-controlled Senate. His role on the Supreme Court has been shaped by drastically different values than those of his earlier days, which were marked by combat boots, berets, activism, Malcolm X, and a vision that now seems a world apart. As a justice, Thomas wields significant power to carve a path and reshape the world we live in. His career has been defined by decisions that chipped away at the Voting Rights Act, overturned landmark rulings like Roe v. Wade, and championed the rollback of fundamental rights. His sway even extended to affirmative action's erosion. For his work on the bench, Thomas received numerous lavish gifts, most of which he didn't disclose, from his far-right buddy Harlan Crow, adding another layer to his contentious influence. Thomas's life is a stark reminder of how power and privilege can intertwine, 
in this case to the detriment of the progressive values he once held so dear. While attaining that Rolls-Royce is now well within grasp, he seems content with embodying all it symbolizes instead.